Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for September 15th, 2022. In the province of North Brabant, Their Majesties King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands began their one-day tour of the region of Depil, an area that was, quote, heavily affected by the coronavirus in 2020, end quote. The purpose of today's regional visit is to learn more about the latest developments in nature conservation, the future of the agricultural sector, new forms of social cooperatives, and innovative enterprises. The day began with a visit to the Nature Reserve National Park de Peel in Derna. Whilst there, a ranger informed their majesties about the various wildlife and plants that are thriving in the reserve. The ranger also explained to his royal guests the importance of nature conservation in the area, the effects of nitrogen pollution, and the transition from cultivated soil to natural soil. Thereafter, their majesties visited the Farmers Union Museum in Haymert Backel and visited the automotive campus in Helmond. Last evening in Den Haag, their majesties King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands along with Her Royal Highness Princess Katharina Amalia, Princess of Aranya, hosted a gala dinner for members of the Council of State held at the Palais Nordainde. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg held an audience with the Chair of the Chamber of Traders, Mr. Tom Oberweis, at the Palais Grand Ducal. During today's meeting, discussions focused on the outlook for the crafts sector facing inflation and especially the impact of rising energy costs, raw materials on production costs, and distribution. Yesterday morning, His Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg met with a former president of the Kreitzberg Foundation, Mr. Henri Grethen, at the Palais Grand Ducal. Mr. Grethen retired from the foundation in July 2022. During their meeting, the hereditary Grand Duke, as honorary chairman of the Kreitzberg Foundation, thanked Mr. Grethen for his unwavering commitment to the foundation. In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians hosted a reception at the Palais Royal for 10 heroes of the Be Heroes Initiative. With the support of His Majesty and the Minister of the Interior, Ms. Annelies Verlinden, the Citizens' Initiative Be Heroes recognizes and honors everyday heroes who have made a big difference with small deeds, far from all the attention, who gave the best of themselves to help others. Awesome. I love that. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was announced that Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians will leave for London via the Eurostar on Sunday morning. In the afternoon, Their Majesties will visit the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's coffin at the Palace of Westminster. On Monday, Their Majesties will attend the state funeral at Westminster Abbey. In Copenhagen, Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark, Princess of Sein Wittgenstein Berlberg, hosted a reception for 19 exchange students from Greenland and 20 students from the Hintofte municipality held at Christian VIII's palace in Malienborg. The exchange students are staying with various host families from the Hintofte municipality. During today's reception, Princess Benedicte welcomed the students in Danish while a teacher from Greenland translated the princess's speech into Greenlandic. After a speech, the mayor from Hintofte, Mr. Michael Fenger, and the students from the Greenlandic school presented a gift to the princess and sang several Greenlandic songs. In Copenhagen, there were changes to Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mary of Denmark's calendar regarding her attendance to the state funeral for the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in London. As of this morning, the Crown Princess will not attend the state funeral on Monday. Instead, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark will attend the state funeral together. In Stockholm, His Majesty King Carl Gustaf of Sweden met with the Speaker of the Parliament, the Riksdag, Mr. Andreas Norlien. The Speaker informed that, following the Prime Minister's request for dismissal, he has started the process to bring forward a proposal for a new Prime Minister. On Tuesday, Her Majesty Queen Sylvia of Sweden 
accompanied by members of the Sylvia Hemet Foundation, visited the Hatsdugan residence, a care home for the elderly living with dementia. In Norfolk, their Royal Highnesses the Prince and Princess of Wales arrived at the Norwich Gate outside the Sandringham Estate to view thousands of floral tributes in memory of the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. During their visit, the Prince and Princess of Wales met with hundreds of mourners who expressed their deepest condolences to the royal couple. In Glasgow, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence arrived at the city chambers to view floral tributes and messages in memory of her mother, the Queen. Upon their arrival, the princess was warmly welcomed by hundreds of locals who came to the city chambers to express their condolences to the princess. Meanwhile, their royal highnesses, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, arrived at the Manchester City Library to view the Book of Condolence. Thereafter, the royal couple arrived at the Manchester Cathedral, where they viewed hundreds of cards and floral tributes in memory of the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The couple also met with hundreds of people who offered their sincere condolences. In Muscat, the Omani royal court announced that His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq al Said of Oman will travel to London, England on Friday morning to personally offer his condolences to His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom. His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq al Said will also attend the state funeral on Monday at Westminster Abbey. In Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan held an audience with His Highness Saeed Fatik bin Fakhar bin Taimur al Said of Oman in his capacity as a special envoy of His Majesty the Sultan of Oman. In New Delhi, His Majesty King Jemme Kesar Wangchuk of Bhutan met with India's Minister of External Affairs, Dr. Jai Shankar. Thereafter, His Majesty visited the Royal Bhutanese Embassy in New Delhi, where he met with the Ambassador of Bhutan to India, as well as met with staff working at the Embassy. In Bangkok, His Majesty King Rama X and Queen Sathada of Thailand held an audience with the outgoing Ambassador of India to Thailand, Miss Suchitra Durai, at Dusset Palace. And finally, on this day in royal history, in 1972, Letitia Ortiz Rocosolano was born in Oviedo, Spain, to Paloma Rocosolano Rodriguez and Jesus Ortiz Alvarez. In 1973, Olaf Daniel Wessling was born at Uri Bru Regional Hospital to Eva and Ule Wessling in Sweden. In 1984, the Duke of Sussex was born to a then His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, and the late Diana, Princess of Wales. Happy birthday to all the royals. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday! And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Friday, September 16th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great Friday tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.